Well, I guess it's important people understand that the renew that sort of there is a renewable revolution happening right now, um, whether they're interested or hearing about it or not. It's underway, basically. The train has left the station. Um, you know, the, the energy system is being transformed, a bit like the internet transformed information, a bit like computers transformed how we you know, run our run our lives. You know, um, the same technology is making it happen. So silicon is the basis. Um, and, and it's, it's meaning that lots of people can get involved. We're going to train, transform the energy system from one that's you know, a large centrally owned system with big corporates owning big assets in the middle of it to one that's distributed, uh, potentially democratically, democ democratically, democ what's the word? Come on. Democratically owned. Thank you. Um, uh, with lots of different people playing a part and providing solutions in their town and in their communities. You're starting to see that already. So Germany um, has now reached 28% renewables on their, on their grid. Um, and of the vast majority of that is owned by individuals, communities and local councils. You know, it's a shift in the power, it's a shift in the ownership of the energy system that's, that's, that's going on with, with the deployment of renewables. So there's this huge opportunity. You know, for me, this is all about opportunity. It's about opportunity for communities not only to be part of the change, but actually to create wealth in their area, to create jobs in their area, doing something that's needed and that's believe, you know, that, that, that people can believe in, basically. So in my town, we decided to give this a go uh, first seven years ago. We, we started to be successful about five years ago when uh, we, we went out to our community saying, we want to build a power station and we'd like you to invest in it. Within two and a half weeks, we've raised nearly half a million pounds that we needed to, to build our first power station. And now we're working on a project that will probably provide about 20% of our entire electricity needs as a, as a town. This is a town of 12,000 people. You know, so you can project that forward. You know, my town could power itself potentially 100% from renewable electricity that's locally owned within 10 years, I would have thought. Certainly within 20, you know, and it's about sort of getting started, starting small, building these companies, getting involved with the network that's out there globally, and actually making the change locally, and giving people a chance to say yes, people actually want renewables, and people are worried about climate change, you know, but messages of fear aren't gonna motivate them to do something. What, you need, what we need collectively to do is create easy ways for them to say yes, and community-owned energy is one of those. You know, why wouldn't you? If I could sell them power that was cheaper than you know, you know from your from your fossil fuel companies and that was green and that was locally owned, what's not to like? You know, it's triple bottom line. People will get it. People will get it, and they do want it. You know, and um, some of the amazing stories um, that I've come across uh, in this movement are often in the poorest areas where you'd expect. You know, people talk about this movement being middle, you know, sort of the climate movement being middle class. So, but when you go into a poor community with these stories and say, look, we want to help you, first of all, save, save money on your bills. How can we do that? Okay, we're going to do draft proofing in your community. You, you win their trust. Then when you come to them and say, do you know what, actually, we want to build a power station on the roof of your block of flats or whatever it is. So, you know, this is a story from Brixton, Repower Brixton. They, they went in there, and when they actually came to building a power station on the roof, they went to the community and said, okay, who wants to invest? And this was a community that had nothing, or very, very little, you know, lots of long-term unemployment. And do you know what? The ownership of that power station at the end was 90% of the people who lived in the building. You know, so it's not a question of you know, people who are in poverty don't want this. They just don't know how to access it. But when you show them the way, they jump, basically. So it's about creating those opportunities for all of our communities to be engaged in this transformation uh, and, uh, and a win-win that will ensue. So there's already great stories from around the world where communities are making the change and Denmark's one of those countries where uh, they, in 30 years they've basically transformed their energy system. So last year they got 40, 2014 they got 40% of their electricity just solely from wind turbines. Um, they now have 60% of their homes attached to district heating networks and they're starting to, to, to repower those district heating networks. So they maybe started off with fossil fuels powering them, now they're using a combination of things like biomass and solar thermal. So a field full of solar panels making heat, providing in some cases as much as 30% of a town's entire heat needs. This is totally possible. Germany as well now has 28% of their electricity from uh, renewable sources. Um, and I've already mentioned the ownership there 
there was a huge transference of ownership of the of the of the generation assets, which are the prime mover. You know, and there's a whole fleet of companies. So there's um, a community um, in the south of Germany called uh, EWS Schonau is the company they set up. Now they they basically in '97 bought back the grid in their town. Today they supply 150,000 people across Germany with 100% renewable energy and manage a whole range of different um, micro grids in different areas. You know, that's a cooperative company that was formed because people were concerned about the fallout from Chernobyl and they didn't want to buy nuclear anymore. You know, so it's totally possible for communities to do this. And that story is repeated across, across Germany. And the end game here is 100% renewable. Now, that might sound like a long way away when you've only got 28% renewables in Germany, but hey, there are already 100% renewable countries. So uh, Costa Rica this year has been 100% renewable for all of its electrical needs. Now, you might think that that's going to cost them an absolute fortune. Actually, they've also announced that they're bringing bills down by 12% this month because they've got so much renewables on the grid and they've effectively already paid for it. You've got Norway, that's 100% renewable for electricity already. Um, and, and Iceland is another great story where they're not only 100% renewable for electricity, they're 100% renewable for heat. So it, it, it's in excess of 80% of their total energy requirement of the, of the whole country of Iceland. Five and a half million people living there comes from renewable sources. The only thing that they're using fossil fuels for is aviation and some of their transport needs. But I'm sure over the coming 10 years, their transport would be decarbonized as well. But there's a huge opportunity now because renewables in many areas in the world becoming the, the cheapest form of, of energy. And I think if you think about what's going on in Africa, the solar light is the big story in many bits of Africa. You know, it's, it's, it's running out without subsidy. You can take people off kerosene for, with $10, they can have a solar light that uh, liberates about 20% of their income, reduces loads of Ill, Ill effects of, of, using, of using kerosene, and you know, transforms their lives basically overnight. You know. Millions of those will be deployed this year, um, and that's the start of the energy escalator. When people start using renewables, they don't stop, they continue. And what you're also seeing is microgrids. So communities basically, um, or companies going into communities saying, would you like electricity in your, in your village? These are places that have never had access to this sort of stuff before. They're building them a, a microgrid powered by solar um, and effectively charging them just for the energy they use. And they're setting up an entrepreneur in that town to run the grid. And after 10 years, they're giving the energy system over to the local community. You know, things like that are absolutely transformative, and they're happening now, and they're going to increase in speed. And I think Africa is the one to watch along with South America. You know, they've got the opportunity to completely leapfrog the big centralised system you know, and go straight to decentralise. And for me, that's, that's really exciting that we've got to that point.